Hello, my name is John Foster and I am an instructor at the art department. Um, this video is going to be about uh, bringing color into uh, a black and white piece. And I, it doesn't actually have to be a black and white piece, but this is normally the way I work on an illustration as I bring it up to uh, a level close to this. This is actually a little bit more finished uh, than the normal, uh, but it'll serve our purpose. Um, I like working in a black and white because uh, it gets down to the, the essence and the root of the composition. The storytelling is all here, um, the shape and pattern, uh, those things are more, to me, they're more readily apparent in just black and white value. The idea of lighting, drama, action, um, placement, overlap, perspective, that all is here and that it's it's basically the foundation that I need to make sure I have in place before I start adding color. So I start adding color, I might get a little, I might get just distracted by the color and start losing some of the, some of what I feel is the, the, the base, uh, the, the foundation again of what's going to hopefully make the painting uh, work and be exciting and be unique too as well. So where I would start, and this is, we won't have time to go through to bring it all the way to color, but uh, I would, uh, this is where I normally start, is uh, bring in, uh, I'll make a copy of the piece because I'd like to always be able to go back to the original, to, you know, the black and white original to see if I'm losing some of that feel and flavor and, uh, and why that might be. Uh, as we add color, we, we often do change the, the values of certain, uh, certain objects and places, skies, the atmosphere, the cars, the dog, um, you start, you can start to change those and you can start to start losing some of the, uh, the impact and the compositional flow that you might have wanted. So, but the first thing that I do is just a general way to introduce color. Very simple as I go into adjustments and go down to selective color. And there is no red or any of these other colors in it right now, but there are these values, white, neutrals, and black. So let's well just start here, and we can start to bring in some color into the white areas. Now, we could have it be relative or absolute. Absolute is a much stronger uh, effect across the board um, and might be, you can experiment with it see where we want to go. Um, I can go back and bring that in. It might be spread out some of that, that color and effect a little bit more. I think I'm going to go back to absolute. See, I want to bring it back down. There we go. And then I'll go to the midtones. So basically what I'm doing is creating a, a tritone print. Uh, with the white, the uh, mid-tones, and the blacks. So, figure out, just moving these sliders around is one of the things why I like about what I like about um, digital work is this ability to experiment. And sometimes, as, we, as, you, as I stated in a previous uh, video, it, that it can go on forever. A little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. What, uh, you know, and then you're just constantly like, it, and give me two minutes and I'll be like, no, I wanted it more yellow. I liked it more yellow. But, you know, at some point you go, okay, well, it's digital. I can always come back and change it, move it around, never really losing anything. And so now, we're going to adjust the blacks. Maybe we'll keep them warmer or cooler, I'm not sure. Let's start off with something a little weird, but that ought to be nice and then uh, or it might work. And then I'll go back to the neutrals and say like what bring some more of that blue in there. And then uh, we can lighten it too a little bit. And go back to we need to pump these things up a little bit more in respect to the other adjustments we made. And there, I hit OK. So 
Okay, not very exciting. Still very much like a looks like a monochromatic painting, but it you know actually is not. There is a it's a tritone, and we've started to add color in. And this is this is the basis of just boy, you know, having a blank canvas and then getting something down on the canvas. I mean, we didn't have a blank canvas, but where do we go with color? Well, I don't know, but we can always go somewhere with it and, and have an idea, you know, of certain certain color harmonies that we're going to start to create. And as we as we create them this way and then we have them uh, grow the colors the colors and their relationships and and the various colors that we can ex expand on and make more intense or add in or progress around the color wheel to uh, to another another color they they come from a, a the, the one the single trunk of the family tree as they branch out and so that's one of the reasons why I, I start this way instead of rarely would I be spotting in color here, there, anywhere, until I've got, uh, not in the very beginning, not until I've got some kind of basic, you know, monochromatic, well, trichromatic uh, uh, foundation. So we can actually go in and adjust, again, we could go in there, and I do do this, as variations that no, we want to select a color, there we go. And now we do have some color in there, and I could, I could change the reds uh, a little bit more. We could, uh, there is some yellow in there. We see we can change the yellows more specifically. Each little group that we can start to kind of micromanage uh, more and more as we go along. Uh, greens obviously looks like there might be some, but that, that always fools me. I guess I don't like green a lot because I never seem to have much in my pieces. Not much away, so I am. Let's see if we move the black slider. Sometimes it's a bigger indication to see if we even have any blues in there. The magentas, not a lot. So well, we'll go back into the white and just along there. Again, again, lighten it a little bit if we want. Let's go. Let's skip over to neutrals for now. There's a lot of saturation in the black, so I can take some of that out, and then I'll, I'm gonna pump up a little bit of the yellow. No, no. Maybe I'll just bring that to cool it off a little bit, just a teeny bit. Bring that down, but also lighten that teeny bit. See, so as you can tell, as I'm doing that, even doing this even now, I am changing some of the value and the value structures in this. Uh, getting color into the blacks, you need to actually change the value a little bit so that um, it can be, it can have color information in it. So let's hit OK. So we've we tweaked it just a teeny bit, a little bit more in terms of saturation, but not a lot. Still, still pretty much a monochromatic feel to the piece. And we'll go, go back into hue saturation. We can, of course, pump up the saturation a little bit, the, the color that is there, we can start to give a little bit more effect to, and I'm gonna bring it in right about there. And also, if you're not really happy with this, and you, you'd like to see what would happen in terms of where these colors are in the color wheel in relationship to each other, this, uh, these muted colors, but they would go from reds to blues to cyans to a little bit of feeling of green and uh, the peachy warm color yellow where they are uh, on the color wheel in relationship to each other you can move them around the color wheel you can change that and say do I want something as bizarre as you know this bluer scene with the warmer now midtones or move it back through and change it to this this bizarre pink purple there's because that's all the intensity there and the other ones are so neutral that you're not getting a lot of change but there are in this case it's, uh, this often uh, does does work for me um, like I'm actually gonna bring it 
down to here a little bit and hit OK. I didn't, I didn't know that I was going to like anything I did there, so I didn't plan ahead, but that's OK. So what I'll do would plan ahead and work on another layer because I, I don't want to keep this. I'd like to keep the original layer. So I'm just going to select all of it. I'm going to copy it into memory, and then I'm going to hit uh, Command Z twice. We're back down to that original layer where we were, and uh, now I'll paste. Since I had it in the memory, it still still stays there, and I can paste it in. Uh, now, of course, we can use uh, we can use this to um, turn it on. It's very very slight, uh, but you can see a little bit of the differences going on. And you know, of course, we can use the layer mask, go in and uh, erase out certain areas that you'd like to keep uh, on the from the original layer, um, or you can. Um, you could just erase, but layer mask, you don't lose any information, which is very nice. So um, I'm going to just get rid of those because I think I'm going to keep it the way it is right now. Maybe there's something up here that not a lot of change up there. Not a lot of change. Let's go ahead and just keep this. I'm just going to, oops, didn't want to do that. Um, there we go. Uh, the next thing that we can do, uh, that I will do here, is make a layer, and I'm just going to put it on color, and we'll grab our just a basic brush, just a basic round. I'm not looking for any real texture at this point. Um, it's not; a, wouldn't be a mistake to use a textured brush, but right now I'm just going to start to add in some of the idea of objects' local color. You know, the like orange ship, a blue car, you know, brown, tan dog, uh, etc. Uh, and um, let me, uh, we have it set on color, I have my brush, and I do know that it was a, a blue car. We can start to add in that. And you know what, say I'm painting over the hand, so what? Not a big deal, because it's on a layer, it's on a color layer. Um, I do have it on full opacity. I'm going to turn that down and let me come back in. I can grab that again and try and take out some of the saturation of that blue. There we go. Let's actually up the opacity a teeny bit. And I don't mind that there's a little bit of, it's, you know, the, I could go back in color-wise uh, uh, with the brush and just paint paint back over any areas that I feel it, um, you know, I covered up or important. But right now I'm really uh, loosely trying to just suggest uh, local color of, of these different, the objects that people Car sky. Oops. There we go. It doesn't really matter yet. So we just start throwing these things on there. Yeah, you know, this is the point where like it's it's it is chaos and, and um Nothing is really, really working together. I mean, I have an idea that, you know, uh, some of the colors and things that I want to happen here, but it's not exactly, not near exactly right, but um, I'm getting things down on, on, on the canvas, basically, that will, I'll be able to try and make relate. We'll just, I'll just throw in a little bit more here. We won't cover everything. Uh, Time-wise, we just don't have uh, have the time. So, you know, just a little bit of suggestion here of these things. And then, um, uh, one more thing up here. Let's go ahead and throw that in.
Sorry for the silence for you guys, but anyways, here <laughs> we have, um, let's go in and, well, let me take it, I'm going to take a short break because I need to reset my brush. Hold on one second. Okay, well, I'm back and the uh, brush doesn't want to reset. Every once in a while I get, uh, there's this glitch that happens with um, Photoshop and my brush goes off center from its uh, ghosted in uh, indicator, the little you know, the, the circle that's moving around here, the same scale and size, and the brush doesn't paint in, in the in the center of it. It's like moved off to the to the bottom and to the left or something like that, and it and it bugs me. But well, I'll we'll have to deal with it. And uh, there we go. All right, so. This is garish and not quite right, but uh, of course it's on a layer, it's on a color layer. We can reduce that down um, by, uh, you know, take it all off, and put it back in. We can um, go back in and take that color layer itself, and let's go and do something quickly and just do, uh, I can move it around the color wheel. take out some of that saturation. Okay. So we do that. And we could, if we liked it more, we can double up on it, just multiply the effect or triple the effect, happening a little bit more. Um, let's get rid of that too. Well, we'll just turn get rid of that. We'll keep it where it was. And we can go in and with that one also adjust it with a select color. So we can change each and say of the reds, they're too purpley. And I'm going to take out some of that and make it a little bit more. Uh, well, looking at the lighthouse, not so much the dog, but so, and say, uh, okay, let's go back in with our brush to the dog. And so we're still on a color layer and I can, I can calm down a lot of this just by going back in and painting on. color in the color mode on that layer, painting around. And we need to bring some of that back up here. And if we get to a point where we're, we're just okay with it and we're uh, going to keep it not at full capacity, but we'll just bring it right about to there. And I'm going to drop it down and apply. Oops, didn't want to do that. Let's drop them down all the way to new. Oops. You, there we go. <laughs> keep missing it. There it is. the beauty. That, that should be about right. Sorry. That's the beauty of digital though, right? You can always go back in history. Oh, there. Okay. Um, again, just go back in. It's it going to be redundant. and would I'd be working on this for a day, trying to get to color. And so we're, we're not going to get all the way there, but um, I'd come back in and go to selective color. And uh, then I would start again adjusting on this one file, this one, uh, this new kind of iteration with a little bit more color brought in, start going through and adjusting again. And we've got more color that we brought in. We need to get rid of some of that red, don't we? <clears throat> if you spend more time and you're a little bit more thorough about putting your color in and and uh, its placement, then you're going to have a little bit better effects and, and uh, than we're having right now. But again, it's just for the idea. And it is actually getting some interesting 
starting points with uh, some of the cools, the warms, the blues, the greens. The, I'm, I'm starting to see some potential in it, and even there, we can just kind of with a neutral, we can we can we can broadly kind of group things together in a family again, which is the last thing I will show you uh, <coughs> on this video. And once I finish up in here, we can. Uh, a little bit of work. And a little bit just to kind of say, again, this the digital me, just a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. And I'm going to leave it right there for now saying, okay. One of the things that we, using using the uh, the midtone slider on uh, the mid value slider on those colors, the selected color adjustments, it 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 does kind of unify the colors. Another way of doing it is I'm going to hit Command Z and just bring it out this uh, back to where we were before we did that is to, to make a layer and just go into very simple, very powerful. Just go uh, into Fill, uh, Edit, Fill, and we are going to use Color. So it's color, and then it'll bring up a color picker. And oddly, you know, you might want to find the color that you that you're thinking about here, but I'll show you. It doesn't really matter in the long run because um, it's on a layer. So just hit OK, and then OK again, and then it fills that layer. Now let's bring that layer down to, you know, you could use it on multiply, easy enough. Maybe that's a little too dark. You could back off from it. Um, you uh, any any mode that you particularly like overlay give a, a lot of uh, saturation intensity to things but lighten it up as well um, as well as soft light which is a little less harsh than the overlay but has a, a bit of the same kind of effect um, let's bring it back in here let's go to soft light and stay there for now but basically uh, it's like putting a glaze over painting um, and you know how much how how opaque or transparent the glaze is, how much it affects the painting, and the way it might unify colors. You can adjust in the slider, of course. You know the opacity. Um, if we even bring that back up and overlay for a little bit of a little bit of saturation and intensity, bring it down right back here. Now, what I was saying, why it didn't really matter the color, was that if you go into adjustments and hue saturation, there you have, you can. Whether I picked it being very saturated color or not, uh, I can change the saturation here, uh, and I can also change the hue. And if you look up here, you can see it changing live in your your preview window. And so whatever color I picked, I could have picked this this green, but that green not very saturated, and but I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. Or we could pick a different, you know, that this blue-gray or this purple and then I want it to be more of a saturated purple but a darker one to see how it affected the the, the file so all of this I'm gonna keep I'm gonna well I'm gonna cancel I'm gonna bring it back around to where it was all of this helps unify colors and you can change them and create a different kind of color cast and family um, with this with your glaze and the color and the, the saturation and value of your glaze that you're putting down so there it is and then this there's be more of this and some more opaque painting and i'm getting to a place where this basically becomes my palette um, that i will pick and choose from uh, with the eyedropper and just keep painting um, and moving and you know and then adjusting them making them a little brighter a little lighter or a little less color and, you know desaturate etc and it just kind of uh, it just kind of grows from here but here's a uh, little longer than I thought but basically the way I would start adding color into a piece